Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to JKS Tech Lab. Today, I want to show you how to integrate Azure AD with Ping One. Um, this is the cloud version of Ping Identity for SSO. So for those of you that are interested in IAM, just kind of show you some of the process of the things that you would be doing. Or if you're actually trying to integrate these two, maybe this will help you out. So what I want to do first, uh, my ultimate goal is I want my Azure AD users to be able to SSO into Ping so that they can access other applications. So First thing I want to do is I want to go to identities and set up a new population for these users. And a population is just a way to organize your users. It can be location, it can be type, it could be whatever you want. Um, it just gives you a way to organize your users and give them access to applications, different stuff like that. So for this one, um, I'm going to call this uh, uh, workforce. We'll just say this is our workforce. I don't want a password policy for this, but you can set one up if you want a specific password policy for your different populations. Um, we're gonna keep it simple. Um, obviously, there would be a lot more details you would do if you're doing this in a production environment, but I just wanna kinda show you that the process. So we have that, and next what we wanna do is go to connections, and I'm not gonna add an application uh, because what I want to do ultimately is I want to allow my users to sign into this ping one application portal to mimic the process of once they sign into the portal, they would actually be able to have access to whatever applications I've put in their portal. But what we need to do is set up an external IDP, which is our identity provider. And that is going to be Microsoft. So you have all these social options, or if you're doing something else, that's that's not one of these. If you if you have like an on-prem ID provider, you are using Okta or One Login or Auth or some something else, just uh, SAML or OpenID Connect. You can use that there. But since we're going with Microsoft, we're going to use their integration. We're going to give it a name. I'm gonna say uh, Azure AD SSO for the for the name, and I'm gonna just give it a description. Authenticate with Azure and it's always important to name whatever connections you set up, whatever integrations, name it, something that makes sense, and then give it a description. So it helps you to remember when you go back later, if you have a bunch of different connections and also if someone needs to come in after you, you they know what's going on. So um, we're going to say that we're going to click continue. And it's telling me I need a client ID, a client secret, and I need to use this callback URL. I need to take this to Azure AD. So I'm going to take this. And in Azure AD, you want to go to app registration. So this is my dev tenant. Again, a lot of this stuff, obviously, you wouldn't want to share, you know, your client secrets and all those different things um, with just anybody. If you have access to both platforms, then there's really no need for you to share with anybody. But if you're trying to integrate, say you're in ping and you're trying to integrate with someone else's Azure AD, or, you know, maybe you're in ping and you're trying to set up a connection to somebody else's whatever platform, then you can share, you know, some information, metadata, client secrets, different things like that. But if you have control over everything, there's no need to ever share this stuff. So, but again. We're just going through it. So I'm going to say new registration. And what do I want to name this? I'm going to call it uh, ping ID workforce SSO. Now, if you just have the one directory in Azure AD, make sure you, you just use this first one. But I have uh, I actually have a custom domain set up for in my Azure AD. So I want to make sure that I can use users from both the default and my custom domain. So I'm gonna click this. If you wanted to allow users to use their Skype or Xbox, stuff like that, you would click this option. And if you only wanted to allow personal Microsoft accounts, so not Azure AD accounts, you could do that as well. So I'm gonna go to web and put my redirect URI in there. And it's registered, but remember, we still need a client ID and client secret. So I can see my client ID right here, but I don't, I don't have a secret. So I'm going to go here and I want to say, create a new client secret for me. I'm going to just copy this, put that in there. Um, you can expire it if you want. Their default or their recommendation is every six months. If you 
if you have control over this and you know you want to go for longer or maybe your your enterprise or your security policy requires it to be for a certain amount you could do that you could do custom amounts just depends we'll just leave it on the default um, for this test i'm gonna click add and now we have our information so we can see our secret id right here so i'm gonna copy it and i'm gonna go back over the ping i'm gonna say client secret boom and then I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to say I need the ID. Where's my ID? Where's my ID? Let's go back over to the overview. There's the ID. I'm going to copy that. And we're going to save and continue. No, I don't want to do that. So now here's your attributes. By default, it's going to send the username. Um, it's already set up to send the email address. What else do we want to send? Maybe first name and last name. So here's where it gets interesting depending on the platforms. They call them different things. So let's see if we can find first name in, in ping. So does ping have a first No. What about um, a lot of these platforms will use given name for first name. So in your ping one user profile, it's going to be the given name. What is it going to be coming from Microsoft? Do they have a given name? Yes, they have given name. Let's do last name. Last name sometimes is different as well. Sometimes it could be surname, sometimes it could be last name, sometimes it could be family name. Let's see what Ping calls the last name. They don't have last name. They don't have surname. So there's its family name. So in Ping 1, it's going to be family name. Let's see what Microsoft has. Do they have family name? Nope. Last name? Nope. Uh, surname. So it's going to send this, it's going to send all this information from Microsoft, and this is what it's going to be inside of Ping. And we'll click Save and Finish. Now, when you're done, if you actually want to use this, you want to enable it. If you don't enable it, you won't be able to add it to policies. Um, you won't be able to use it. You'll get an error saying it's disabled. So we're just going to click Enable. So now what we want to do is go add this to a policy so that we can add it to, you know, add that policy to our application. So what I want to do is go to experiences and authentication policies. Now, for this test, I'm just going to use single factor. I don't feel like setting up multi-factor for this test user. I'm going to delete this, this configuration as soon as I'm done anyway. But if you're doing this in a production environment, um, you definitely want to use multi-factor. Um, even if you're doing it in a test environment and you're going to leave it enabled, you want to use multi-factor. So I'm going to say um, single factor. I'm going to edit this policy. Uh, what do I what do I want to happen? Do I want them to be able to recover their account? Sure. Do I want them to be able to register? So this allows me to ha have my users from Azure AD actually get registered when they log in for the first time. Um, so I don't have to set them up in ping directly and go through and set up everybody. So I'm gonna say yes. This is where that population comes in. Where do I want them to go? I want them to be on that workforce. As far as uh, provider, I'm gonna go here. So if we would have had other ones, then we would be able to add multiple, but we're good here. Um, do I want to require confirmation? You can set that up and you can kind of look and see what it's going to be. But uh, if I needed to add more steps, I could. I'm going to just keep this super simple so we can test the integration. So that's cool. We got that. Now what I need to do is go over to the application. Now, obviously, if I had other applications in here, I would set I would add this policy to those so that they can log in. But basically, we want to mimic this portal application. So basically, I want to have them sign into the portal and then they would have other applications that they could go to from there. So um, that's what we're going to mimic here. I'm going to go over here and add this policy. You can see the single the single factor policy is already there. But if it wasn't, I would just go in and add it right there. So we have this set up. Um, let's see. Now, uh, we should be able to test it. So let's test it. What I want to do is go here and grab the URL for that application, which is going to be my application URL. So I have that copied, and I'm going to just always test in a private um, tab, just so you don't deal with any cache or anything like that. So when we come to this login page, you're going to see there's an option to sign on with Microsoft because we added that as an IDP. So I'm going to click that and it's going to take me to Microsoft for my test user saying, OK, this is the test user actually is picking up my cash for some reason. So this is my test user. Um, do I accept? I'm going to say yes. Even the even the private tab is still picking it up. So 
and this is on purpose. I wanted you to see this. So there's an error. What what's going on? You're gonna get some information. So it's saying this is the wrong response. Invalid client secret. I thought we copied that. You gotta look a little deeper. Specifically for this, it's telling you exactly. Make sure the secret being sent is the client secret value, not the client secret ID. That doesn't make sense, right? You would think because it said client secret ID, that's what you would use. But again, all these platforms do it differently. So we need to go back and change that. So what I need to do is go over here. And instead of that secret ID, I need the value. So, um, and like I said, I did that on purpose because this is the type of stuff that you'll run into, you know, on a daily basis when you're dealing with these different platforms. So I'm going to go here. I want to go back to the connection. And I want to change this. So I'm going to edit the connection. I'm going to update the client secret. So we did that. Now let's see if we get any more errors. I want to copy that URL again. And I'm going to sign on with Microsoft. It sees who I am. So I want to say sign in. No, we're just going to go. And we're signing in. And it's, it's saying enter the information. So username, what email address do I want to use? So I'm going to just put in the email address here really quick. And it did that so it can send me a verification code. So let me grab that code really quick. So I'm verifying. Now my account is set up. If I would actually have applications set up for this user, they would see it here. But as you can see, my test user from Azure AD, I am test. If we go into the account, you can see my information is in there. After it had me verify I was who I was, um, you can see there the email. Um, I can edit my profile if I wanted to. You can see some of the information that's in here. So we could have sent city, state, zip code. I know we sent first name, last name, but you can see it's not actually on the profile. And you can change that on your platform, what actually gets displayed, what they can edit, all the different stuff. But you can see I am test. And also if we wanted to look we can go here as the admin to users. And what I should see is the username I am. So there it is. And you can see again, given name, I am, family name, test, username, what it what it is right here, my email or contact address, that's it. So um, the reason I changed this and put this email address in here is because this actually isn't an email address it doesn't work if you're using real users then you can they will probably just copy their same email address so that they can get that verification but yeah you can see right there so that's how you set up um, your azure active directory to allow sso into ping so basically azure is acting as our identity provider and then like i said we can go in set up other applications for our users and as long as they authenticate with their azure ad credentials they'll be able to sso into our other applications so hopefully uh, you find this interesting for those of you that are interested in you know i am and some of the stuff that you set up with sso and how some of these identity provider connections and things like that work like i said for me this is stuff that i just enjoy like i, said, I do this on a daily basis and um, i like playing with this stuff as well so i you know like i said i have dev environments where i can just go through and try a bunch of different stuff just to see how different platforms work and um you know i like keeping a little you know a few little mistakes and stuff in there because that's some of the stuff that you'll run into when you're doing this on a daily basis so if you have any questions let me know so next time i'll see y'all later this is jk from jks tech lab peace